warm welcome to everyone to our service today, whether you're here in person or you're watching from the comfort of your own home. We, we film our services, so uh, you can go home and, and watch it on YouTube a bit later. It's great to have you with us. This is one of our family services. Um, so it's a very interactive, hands-on service, isn't it, guys? We've got uh, quite a number of children here. It's great to have you with us. Um, I am going to ask this week if the ch kids get a little bit bored. Hopefully you won't, because there's quite a lot of action. And if they start running around, um, uh, we're going to ask Mum to take them to the back and um, with there are some activity sheets. But hopefully you'll all be glued to what we're going to talk about this morning, OK? Yeah. So let me start by asking you a question. Is there anything special, guys, about today? The tendency is, if, if, I'm, if, if, I'm try, if I'm speaking and you want to speak to somebody during the service, try and do it in a, a, not a very loud voice. Um, so anyway, are you listening up? Michael, are you listening? What's special? Is there anything special about today? Oh, he's off. <laughs> Anything special about today? Anybody know what's special about today, Mitchell? Mother's Day. Thank you. Thank you. Or as we shall see, some people call it Mothering Sunday. And we'll be going into why that might be in a, a little while. So happy, happy Mothering Sunday to everyone, whether you're a mum or not. So the whole focus of our service is going to be all things mums. Before we, uh, we get on with all the action today, I'm going to start our time together with words that are important to us at St Martin's. So listen up. This, this welcome helps us understand the welcome that God gives to each and every one of us. So God is saying to us this morning, listen up, Daniel, John, John. John, listen up, listen up. This is what I'm going to say, is the welcome that God gives us this morning. God is saying to us, come, you who have much faith, or you that have no faith or little faith at all, come, you who have neglected me, and you who are with me day by day. God is saying to us, come, for I am beckoning you in, whoever you are. So we're going to open our song, uh, open our time with a song called Come Now is the Time to Worship. It's, it's a bit of a goey song. Um, and what I like to do is get you kids down here in the aisle and you can yes. this morning actually the kids and everybody else because 
we're going to start off with a quiz. Okay, but it's quite an easy quiz. All you have to say is true or false. Now, to help the kids, if you like, we've got a card here. On one side says true, and the other side says false. So I'm going to give you some statements, and you can, you're going to sh hold up whether you think the statement is true or false. Now, I'm, I haven't got cards for absolutely everybody, and of course we want the adults to join as well. So we're going to do true, thumbs up, false, thumbs down. So everybody can take part. Right, who would like a card then? Right, guys, are you listening? So true or false? Today, this special day for our mums, was thought up as a way for card companies and flower companies to make money. True or false? Great, great. It is, it's false. It's false. The origins of the day are nothing to do with companies making money. Having said that, they do jump on the bandwagon and make money. But the origins of this, it's not a day that has just been made up. Okay, question two. Question two. Let's think of how long we've been celebrating this day in the UK and I'm going to give you three figures and for each one you've got to say true or false. Has it been on the go in the UK for 50 years? True or false? False. Well done over here. Yeah. So next one. Has it been on the go in this country for a hundred years? True or false? Also oh, we're doing well over here Julie and Daniel. Yeah. Yeah. Well done Kelvin. Next one, has it been on the go in the UK for over 400 years? True, Kathleen, yes, well done. Come on, folks, I don't see many thumbs. Well done. So, yes, that's true. In the UK, we've been celebrating this special day for hundreds and hundreds of years, between 400 and 500 years. Okay, next question, because this is really interesting. How long have they been celebrating this day in other countries around the world? That's USA, Australia, Canada, New Zealand. They've been celebrating today, but is it firstly 400 years like it is in this country? True or false? It's not 400 years. Is it 50 years? since the rest of the world had been... We're getting a bit closer there. Is it a hundred years, true or false? Yes, there's quite a few thumbs up. In the rest of the world, they've been celebrating this day for a hundred years. So there's some vast difference. Now, the origin of the day in this country and the rest of the world is different. That's why they've been celebrating the day for different lengths of time. Now, the roots in our country go back hundreds of years when people, all people hundreds of years ago, used to go to church. Once a year, people were encouraged to go to the main church in the area. It would be like us going today to the cathedral in Derby, let's say. And the main church was known as the Mother Church. So the name Mothering Sunday came about when they all visited the main church. Now in those days, all you guys, anybody who's 10 or over, used to leave home and go and work in large houses hundreds of years ago. And so when they went back to their mother church, <coughs> they also used to start honouring their mothers on that day. And so they were given a special day off to visit their mother and the mother church. I'm losing my voice. So, next question. <coughs> what is the correct name for this day today in the UK? We're not talking about the rest of the world in the UK. True or false? Is it Mothering Sunday? Today is called Mothering Sunday. True. What's the correct name in the rest of the world? Is it Mothering Sunday? True or false? That's right. Well done over there. 
It's false. Is it Mother's Day, true or false? Great, well done, Emma. People are surprised by this. Mother's Day is an Americanism, okay? Mother's Day has only been on the go in the USA for the last hundred years or so. It's a day they honour mothers. So it's not a, a company, a, a, a thing that people have just made up so companies make money. They honour mums on this day. But Mothering Sunday here in the UK was going on for hundreds of years before USA came up with their day. And I think if we're not careful in this country, we will lose the distinctiveness of our Mothering Sunday. And as a result, I'm very privileged that I've still got my mother alive in her 90s, and I always try and buy her a card that says Mothering Sunday, just to try and keep the tradition alive. And I've got three children. I was telling um, Diane this this morning. Um, but they wouldn't dare buy anything else with a card on it apart from Mothering Sunday. They know that I would I like to have a card that acknowledges the UK name for today. Right, another question, guys. Let's think about the dates the day is celebrated in the UK and the rest of the world. Mothering Sunday or Mother's Day, the days we celebrate them are the same in the UK and the rest of the world. True or false? True or false? False. You're absolutely right. The days in the UK and the rest of the world are completely different. In the UK, the tradition is that Mothering Sunday is always three weeks before Easter. So Mothering Sunday in the UK differs depending on when Easter is. The date is very different in the USA, Canada and the rest of the world. They, does anybody know when Mother's Day is in the rest of the world? No, it's, it's not June? May. May, May. It's always the second Sunday of May. So if you've ever got, if you've got relatives that live in the rest of the world, they will um, celebrate Mother's Day at a different time uh, to when we're celebrating um, Mothering Sunday. Right, any of you mums, did you get any special presents today? Did you guys? Sorry? Lovely, Julie. Kathleen, did you get anything special? Yeah? Great. Yeah, Sandra? Plants, lovely. Elaine? Lovely, super. Right, well, let's just think back to hundreds of years ago. There were a couple of things that children very commonly got their mums. Let's see if we can guess what they are. Right, true or false? Was one of the common presents hundreds of years ago a new mug? True or false? True or false, a new brush? No? True or false, flowers? Yes, yes. Boys would often pick their mums from wildflowers at the side of the road. Uh, they'd pick a posy of flowers for their mum. Now, there was a second thing that girls often used to get for their mums hundreds of years ago. Was it uh, a box of chocolates, true or false? I don't know if they had boxes of chocolates in those days, and people that went to work in big posh houses wouldn't be able to afford them. A new pair of socks. No! no. no. The third one, the third one, true or false, a cake. Yes, a cake. The girls would often make their mum a cake. And it was a very special sort of cake. Anyone know the sort of cake? that girls used to make, they have, it has a special name. Right guys, it, a special cake for Mothering Sunday was a Simnel cake. Right, I now need you guys because I've actually, you don't often see Simnel cakes anymore, but I found one, I haven't baked one. <clears throat> I found a shop where I could buy one. Right guys, do you want to come and look at this cake? I bet you wonder what was done just stand at the side so everybody else can see it. 
I'm just going to I'm just going to show um, on the uh, camera as well. Right. This is a special sort of cake. Right. Um, and I want you guys. I'm going to take out a slice, and I'm going to ask these youngsters to try and look at the ingredients to tell me what sort of this. So what do you think was the sort of cake? It's not a chocolate cake. It's raisins. Well done, David. Can you see anything else? It's got, it looks like icing, but actually it's something called marzipan. Do you know what marzipan is? It's something called a marzipan. So it's got raisins, it's got sultanas. What else is in a cake? It's not got some smarties. That's a marzipan with sugar on it. So we're going to get the chance to eat this later, but I did wonder whether you guys wanted to taste a little bit now. You don't like raisins. I think it looks jolly yummy, actually. Anybody else will You do want to try it? Daniel, do you want to try it? Daniel, fabulous. Thank you, Calvin. Well done. You're going to sit down again. <clears throat> so there's eggs, butter, lots of dried fruits, raisins and stuff. Once, if you have a close look at it, there is a seam of marzipan in the middle, and then the fruit mixture on top, and then this is a marzipan uh, top. That's the typical ingredient of a Simnel cake. So we're going to pause there. Uh, because we want to have the chance to say thank you uh, for our mums this morning, as people have done in the UK for hundreds of years. And we're going to first of all do it through song. We're going to sing a song called Thank You God, Thank You Lord for this fine day. But for subsequent verses, we're going to add in our own thank yous. Has anybody got any idea what they would like to say thank you to God for today? There's one big obvious thing. For our mums, and Julie, did you say something else? For our lives, yeah? So we've got, I think there's four verses <clears throat> in this song. We're going to say thank you, Lord, for this fine day. We're then going to say thank you, Lord, for our mums. And then we're going to say thank you, Lord, for our lives, and we've got one more thing that we can say thank you for. Anybody got any ideas? Friends, friends and family. Thank you, Lord, for friends and family. Yes, you might have to lead us with that. Um, so yes, so that's four verses. Uh, let me uh, get that right. Mum, life, and friends and family. Great. There we go.
So, one other thing we've been, they've been doing for hundreds of years in this country is saying thank you to God by praying. Do any of you do <coughs> prayers at school? Do you know what prayer, prayers are? Yeah, do you do prayers at school? So basically, prayer is just, a, prayer is just us communicating, chatting with God. But sometimes we need to concentrate on what we're doing. So we're, we're taught to put our hands together. Do you do, that at, do you do that at school? John, John, listen up. Do you, do you say prayers at school ever? Are you encouraged to put your hands together? So I would just encourage you now to listen to what I'm going to say, because I'm going to say thank you uh, for our mums. Um, but what... We need to be aware of today is today can be a difficult time for a lot of people. Um, people whose mums are no longer around today, it can be a bit of a sad day. And for those uh, people who haven't had good relationships with their mums, this can be a difficult day. And for those who would like to have been a mum but haven't been able to, this is a difficult day. Or some mums whose children have died can be, this day can be a very difficult day. So we're going to acknowledge that, but we're also, uh, I think it's important to give thanks for mothers and also to give thanks for people who in effect do a mother's job. We can all mother, whether we're male, female. So I think we should just say thank you for everyone who mothers. So, uh, how we're going to do these prayers is I bring along or show a picture of a teaspoon. And the abbreviation, the shortened version of a teaspoon is TSP. And so our prayers in the service are of three types. We're going to say thank you, but then we're also going to say sorry to God for when we get it wrong, when we as mums get it wrong, when we as children get it wrong, and then later on in our service we're going to be saying some please prayers when we're going to ask God um, yeah, to uphold, um, to, to be close to certain people. So we're going to do that a little bit later. But now I'm going to say let us pray. So if you can, sit as quietly as you can, and if it's helpful, close your eyes and uh, put your hands together. So let us pray for our thank you prayers. Thank you, God, for all mothers. And thank you, God, for all who do a mother's job. Thank you for those that care for us, whether we're an adult or a child. Thank you for everyone that makes us feel loved and valued. So thank you, God, for everyone who mothers and cares for us. And in our sorry prayers, Lord, we take the time now to say sorry for the times we haven't treated our mums or parents well, where we haven't given parents the love that they have shown to us when we fought with family members. And Lord, those of us who are parents, we acknowledge times now where we do get it wrong, when we've not treated our children as we should. And Lord, we ask for your forgiveness for all the things we've done wrong. Help us to be better people in the future. So thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Well done, everybody. That was excellent. Good listening. Good listening. So, just before our song, we looked at the ingredients of our simnel cake. So let's return to thinking about mums, and let's think now, not of the ingredients of a Simnel cake, but about the ingredients that make up a perfect mother. What is a perfect mother like? Any ideas? What are the ingredients, the characteristics that make up a perfect mum? Now, bear in mind, none of us uh, are perfect, yeah? But these are just imagining the ingredients of the perfect mum. What do you think? How would you describe your mum? Come on. What's a, a, perf a perfect picture of a mum? Any thoughts? <coughs> Caring and kind, somebody says. John? John, have you got any words that would describe your mum? I've put you on the spot there. Anybody else? Uh, Diane? Loyal. 
Loyal, good one. I, Loyal. I love you, mums. Yeah, no. Mums are loving. Patience. Patience. Anything else? Mitchell. Yes, mothers help you in all sorts of ways. Kindness. Kindness, great one, Julie. Right, I need a few helpers at the front now. I seem to have lost my... Um... Oh, no, there they are. Right, I've got some words that I've come up with. So if you want to stand in the line, anybody else want to come up? I probably... Yeah, and I'm going to give you each a word to hold that describes mum. Yeah, you don't need that one, uh, Kelvin. Oh, you give me that. Oh, you can pop that down. Right, stand in line. Stand in line. And we've already said some of these. Well done. So, this is the first one. These are the characteristics of a perfect mum. You hold that up, that beautiful yeah, no. well done. It says loving. Mums are loving. Caring. Caring. Good. Well done, James. Well, Caring. Yeah, you can have this one. I think, was it your mum said this? Perfect mums are kind. Okay? Aiden, do you want to hold that one up? Thank you. Somebody over here said patience. <coughs> Mitchell's got protecting. Perfect mums protect their children. Well done. I've got a couple more. Mums are forgiving. Well done, Daniel. Thank you. Yeah? Yeah, you can hold two. Yeah. So that one says mums, mums want the best for us. Yeah? Yeah. And finally, John, you can hold to mums make sacrifices for their children. Yes, yeah, stand up here because everybody needs to be able to read those words. Okay. So look at the characteristics of the perfect mum. And I wonder if you've ever thought about what the characteristics of God are, what God is like, what Jesus is like. Do you know that in the Bible... Time and time again, God and Jesus, who was God in human form, are described as having the characteristics, they are described as being like the perfect mother. Yeah? So this is a really important thing. Want to know what God is like? Want to know what Jesus is like? Well, he has the characteristics. He displays the characteristics of a perfect mother. And we are God's precious children. You see, I always see Mothering Sunday as a day when we can be reminded of this picture of God, this picture of Jesus being like a perfect mother. And we are his precious children. Look at these words again. Loving, patient, kind, caring, forgiving, protecting. Yeah, you turn around so everybody can see it, Jaden. Um, Kelvin. They, mums want the best for us, make sacrifices for us. This is what God is like. This is what God is like. Isn't that amazing? I think this is amazing and a really lovely picture of God. Great. I think we need to sing again. Right, let's, let's stand and sing. God's love is big. God's love is strong. God's love goes on and on and on. Um, God's love is just like the love of a perfect mum. Surrounds me every day And I love to 
that our Bible in several places gives us a picture of God, of Jesus being like the perfect mother. And we are his special, precious children. And, and we want, I just want to look at one specific example. Now, I need, I need my helpers again, because I need you to guess. I want to show you a clue about how Jesus describes himself. Well done, Mitchell. Let's open this up. I'm going to show the folks at home what's in here. Can anybody see? Can you see what's in there? Eh? Hayden, come and help. And you can hold. You can hold this and feel what they feel like. There you go. Will you have that one? You don't want to. Okay. You can hold it if you want. Yeah. So, can you hold that? Can you hold that? So, what do you think? Where have these come from? You can take one if you want. Bird! It is a type of bird, yes. It's not a pigeon. Hmm. A parrot? And I've got wings. It's not, it's not a parrot. See, see if you can guess what sort of bird. An emu. An emu? No? I know what it is, but I forgot what it was called. Well, actually... Chicken! It's a chicken! I, I thought that, but I forgot what it was called. Yeah, or a hen. You can keep it if you want. You can take a couple if you want. Just... Right. Let's... Right. So, this gives us a clue to the picture 
that the Bible actually gives us of what God is like. Right. In our Bibles, Jesus spoke of himself as being like a mother to us, and he gave us a picture of actually being like a mother hen. He actually gives us a picture of being like a mother hen. Jesus spoke to the people and said, How long have I ached to gather you together like a hen gathers his chicks under his wings? Now, I've got this picture of a chicken. This is how a chicken behaves when it's protecting its young. This is a mother hen. Uh, when the chicks are in danger, she, she gathers them under her wings and protects them from all danger. Okay? So Jesus is saying, I long to wrap my arms, my, my wings around you, like a mother hen gathers her chicks. Imagine we are a chick and God, Jesus, is this mother hen gathering us, protecting us. And it gives me, I love pictures, it gives us a wonderful picture of um, the mother-like characteristics of God, just like a mother hen. This, is, this actually is a, a picture we have in our Bibles. You see, a mother's deepest instinct is to protect her children, her, her chicks, if you like. It's like that with the hen, okay? And it's this lovely f- picture of how Jesus feels about us. So let's look at our um, let's just look at our characteristics of a perfect mother, our characteristics of God again. God is patient, kind, loving, protecting, forgiving, caring. These are all uh, the characteristics of a, a, a mother hen. Now one at the bottom says makes sacrifices. Okay, makes sacrifices. Just For a minute, let's just think about any way that Jesus has made a sacrifice for us, his children. And I just want to share with you a story about a mother hen which illustrates for us the salt of God that we have. Imagine God being like this mother hen in the story. Okay. And I've got some pictures to share with you. Again, that's a lovely picture of a mother hen protecting her chicks. But this, this next picture is the picture about our story that we're going to use. Okay, the farmyard. Listen up, guys. Listen up to our story. The farmyard, here we have the farmyard, was a safe and warm place for the animals that lived there. The pigs were in the sty the young calves in the big shed, the lambs in the fields, the ducks on the pond, and the hens. Here we have one of the hens. The hens were everywhere. One particular mother hen here was busy with her newly hatched chicks, little fluffy yellow bundles of new life. It was a really safe place to live until one particular night three weeks before Easter. The animals had settled to sleep when there came a strange new smell, a dangerous smell. The mother hen awoke. It was the smell of burning. Something, somewhere, had caught on fire and her fire had begun. It spread fast. The hay in the hayloft caught light and the dry wood of the pens was soon ablaze. Panic set in for the animals. And of course, the mother hen drew her chicks into her for safety. Surely the farmer would come and rescue them. The mother hen sat tight and waited. She could have saved herself, but she couldn't leave her precious, precious chicks. The farmer did come, but not to the barn where she was, bringing water and beat as he and his friends did their best to douse the flames and rescue the bigger animals. It was hard work and they could only contain the disaster and wait for dawn to see the damage. 
Okay, next morning, when the farmer searched the ashes in the barn, he spied a lump of charred feathers in the corner. The hen, overcome by the fumes and the heat, had died. That mother hen had died. But something was alive. What do you think was alive? What do you think was alive beneath that burnt, charred hen? Michael? The chicks. The chicks. Well done. The farmer brushed back the mess and out stumbled six little chicks protected from the disaster by a mother's protecting, sacrificial love. She had given her life so that they could go on living. That's what a mum is like. But that is also what God is like. This happened three weeks before Easter to the hen, and this event, more than anything else, helped the farmer to understand, for the first time, what Easter was about. You see, a mother's hen, a mother hen sacrificed her life for her chicks. She gave, gave up her life so they could live. But you see, this gives us a perfect picture of what Jesus did for us that first Easter. On Good Friday, Jesus was sacrificed. This is what happened to Jesus on Good Friday. Just like the hen sacrificed herself for the chicks, Jesus wasn't burned in a barn he was crucified on a cross. The chicks lived as a result of their mum's death. And the whole point of Jesus' death is that we can live in a relationship with God, free of all sin and guilt, because of the death of Jesus. He did this for us. He sacrificed his life at Easter for us, his children. In effect, his precious chicks. He died so that we can live. And we heard in our story motherly sacrificial love displayed by the hen. But on Easter, on Good Friday, we see perfect motherly sacrificial love displayed by Jesus for us, his children. God loves each and every one of us with a love like that of a perfect mother and a perfect mother hen. So... We're just coming to a close now, but I've got one more uh, picture. Uh, we're going to just say, end our time by having another set of prayers, very short prayers, when we pray uh, for others. Um, um, sometimes we pray for people that we know. We ask God, please help them. But today we are going to, to pray for people and ask, ask God to help um, people who find today a difficult day. And this is a time of prayer again, where we sit quietly, and if it helps us, we put our hands together. Um, and then after that, we'll just have our final hymn, and then a cuppa, and some simnel cake. Um, so let's, uh, let's pray for our please prayers. Lord, we pray for all those known to us who find Mothering Sunday a difficult day. We pray for those that find the behaviour of their children difficult to cope with. We pray for mothers who struggle to bring up children on their own. And we pray for those who have not been able to have much wanted children. And we pray for those that have failed to be the good mothers that they had hoped to be. And we pray for those that have had difficult experiences of their mother. And then, Lord, we just pray for ourselves. Help each one of us know the love that you have for each and every one of us, that love that is like the selfless, sacrificial love displayed by a perfect mother. And, Lord, we acknowledge that all love comes from you, and we ask that you will inspire us to become mother-like in our concern for everyone. We ask our prayers in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen always marks the end of our prayer time. <coughs> so there's one more thing. 
we need to do before we sing our final song. We wanted to give everyone a small gift this morning. You've maybe noticed the lovely uh, colourful primulas there. And you might argue that we on Mothering Sunday would only give these gifts to people that are mums. But we want to this morning acknowledge um, people that play a mothering role, that love others like the love of a perfect mum, but maybe aren't mums. And this includes men too. So we, yeah, exactly. We want to be able to give one of these to absolutely everyone. Um, But also, when you receive this flower, let's just be reminded of how much God loves and cares for each one of us as well. No matter who we are, God loves us with a love like a perfect mum. And I don't know what happened to our... Oh, yes, we still have some feathers. And um, I also, I've got quite a lot of feathers here. So I thought, as well as a plant, you could all have a feather to take home, uh, just to remind you that we are like uh, one of God's little chicks who... He loves, yeah, with a, just an amazing, <laughs> protective, sacrificial love. So yes, a plant. Uh, Nick is just going to play some music. Suddenly, all the kids have disappeared because I was going to ask the kids to give them out. Maybe would you help as well, Ros? Michael, would you like to give out some of the plants? You can. Uh, uh, Mitchell, would you like to help? Daniel, would you like to help? <coughs> yeah, come on then. Some of you can give a feather to everybody if you want. Well, that's maybe not quite so exciting. Right. Great job, Kelvin. Yeah, super. That's great. You've done a fantastic job. Well done. And thank you, everybody, for behaving so beautifully. Yeah, you can have... Yeah, you can take some. You'll be, finding, you'll be finding feathers everywhere. So our final uh, song is our, great, our God is a Great Big God. And after, after our service, we invite you to, to stay for some simnel cake. Um, and there's biscuits, tea and coffee. So, uh, so yeah, let's sing. Let's stand and sing if you're able. Our God is a Great Big God. Our God is a Great Big God.
let us all go home and be reminded that God loves us all with a love like that of a perfect mother. So Lord, send us out to reflect that love, to be a mother-like in our concern for others, whether we're male or female, adult or child. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be with you all and remain with you always. Amen. Thank you, guys. Thank you, guys. Our God is a great big God.